everybody. Uh, so in this video, I wanted to go over using Netlify to host uh, an Ionic application. And so I just started using Netlify recently because I migrated my blog over to using uh, Gatsby. So it's built with React now and it's a static website. And I use Netlify to host that. They seem to be good, uh, a good host for static websites. Uh, but they have this really nice uh, deployment process uh, where basically you just connect it to whatever GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket repository that your uh, project is in. You specify whatever build commands you have, and then it will just all automatically deploy for you. So they have this continuous integration process where basically you have some kind of uh, pipeline for deploying your uh, builds to wherever you're hosting them. And so basically in this case, uh, just as a simple example, you have uh, your GitHub repository, you push that to uh, GitHub or wherever, and then it's all just going to automatically deploy for you. And so you can see in the example they have here, uh, where you select the branch that you want to deploy from. So usually that will just be uh, the master branch. So whenever you push to that specific branch, uh, it's going to uh, build your site and deploy it. Uh, you supply it with a build uh, command. In this case, they're using yarn build, but that could be whatever you need it to be. And so for my Gatsby blog now, it was, um, I think the command is Gatsby build, I forget. Uh, but then you just also specify the uh, directory where the built site is going to be after that command is run. So I haven't actually done this with an Ionic application yet, but I thought it would be cool to do it on screen. And uh, it seems like it'd be a really good fit for deploying an Ionic application as a web app or as a progressive web app. Uh, you should be able to just use the Ionic build prod command and the directory in Ionic's case will be the www directory. So what I'm going to do is just uh, walk through doing that. Uh, I've got a example Ionic application uh, set up. Uh, it's just a new blank Ionic application called Netlify test. Uh, if you were doing this, obviously you'd use whatever application you want to deploy. Uh, maybe you'd have uh, have it set up as a progressive web app. You could have service workers set up and whatnot, but this is just going to be a completely blank Ionic application, just as an example. And you can see the um, features and pricing and whatnot for Netlify here. I'm not really gonna go through much of that, but there is a free tier you can use, and I think it's quite generous. I'm not really sure on what the uh, bandwidth limits are, but there doesn't seem to be any. Uh, I'm sure there would be it at some point. Uh, but overall, it's been a really nice service to use. It's very uh, very well designed, very easy to use, very uh, developer friendly, I think. So uh, you can look into that if you want. And I'm going to get started on actually deploying this Ionic application. So all we need to do uh, is set up a, a Git uh, repository of some sort first. So I'm going to set this up on my GitHub. And so all we need to do on the project, if you haven't already uh, set up a Git repository in your project, you just need to run git init, git add all, and this is just the normal uh, git commands. And then just set up your first commit. Uh, so I'll just say initial commit. And then we're just gonna create a new repository in GitHub. And again, this could be Bitbucket or GitLab if you prefer. I'm just gonna call this Netlify test. And it can be public. Actually, just as an example, I will set that to private because you can do private repositories and uh, with Netlify, and that's probably what most people will want to do. So I'll set that to private. And I think um, I think GitHub private repos are uh, free now. Hopefully they are, because I don't have a paid account with GitHub. So we'll see. Uh, I'll set it to private, create repository. And then we're just going to push up whatever code we have to uh, GitHub. So we'll add the remote origin and push up what we have. Okay, so that is done pushing now. Let's just check that it is all there and it seems to be. Uh, so now we can jump into uh, Netlify. And once you've created an account with Netlify and logged in, I, uh, I won't walk through doing that. I'm sure you can manage, um, but once you're logged in, you'll just see a, a screen like this and you'll see in the top right corner here, a button that says new site from Git. 
just click on that. And then you have to connect to whatever your Git uh, provider is. In this case, we're using uh, GitHub. So I'll click on that. And it's just going to do the usual Netlify would like to access, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so once everything uh, is authorized there, you're about to just search for the repo that you want to uh, set up. And then you just select it from uh, the list down here. Okay, so then there's a few uh, settings here. So you can say this is a personal site or you can uh, sign up to a specific uh, team in your uh, account. And then you want to choose the branch to deploy, which is just going to be master unless you want to set up a, a different branch that you want to deploy from. Uh, then you just specify the build command that you want to use and the published directory, which is going to be uh, www for Ionic applications. Uh, if you were doing uh, maybe some development uh, deploys, you could leave off the prod command if you want. Uh, but if it is your final production deploy, you should have that flag on there. Uh, there are some advanced settings available for uh, these deploys and you can uh, define this netlify.toml file in the root uh, folder of your project to specify these build commands and other things as well uh, if you prefer to do it that way. Uh, anyway, so once those uh, that command and the publish directory is in place, what we need to do is click deploy site and then we do a little bit of waiting you can see we've got a new uh, site created for us here, which has an automatic name. This one's called Quirky Mestorf. And uh, you see it says site deploy in progress. Uh, so basically it's just grabbing whatever's in the master branch now and it's running a uh, deploy. So it'll do the deploy. It's gonna allow you to set up a custom domain if you want. So rather than having this weird name, you can have your own custom domain for your app. And it also automatically sets up an SSL certificate with Let's Encrypt. So you don't even need to worry about that. Uh, there's lots of other stuff here, which I'm not gonna go into, but they have a bunch of um, uh, features you can use like uh, forms and Lambda functions and whatnot. It only looks like the site deploy actually failed. Maybe I should have done a test run before I did this. Um, build script return non-zero exit code. Uh, let's see if I just run a uh, build command locally run ionic build prod see if we get any errors from that actually you can also just look in here which is probably maybe going to be easier okay so the <clears throat> the, uh, the ionic command is not available on netlify of course because um uh, Ionic's installed globally on my computer, so I guess I'll just have to install Ionic locally in the project as well. Yeah, so that build works fine uh, locally, so uh, I'm not actually sure if uh, this is the best way to do it, so somebody tell me if it isn't, but uh, we should be able to just npm install uh, safe dev uh, Ionic. And this is going to be a good example actually of uh, making a change and then pushing it back and having the deploy happen automatically. Okay, so I have added Ionic to the project there. So let's try that again. So we're going to git add all, git commit, added Ionic to project and git push. Okay, so we'll refresh this now. We should see a new deploy in progress. And yeah, so you can see here how it just, I didn't need to do anything. All I need to do is just push my new code up uh, to the repo and then the deploy happens automatically. So that deploy is going to be running now. We can watch this deploy log as it happens. It looks like the command actually worked this time because you can see it's running the Angular, uh, Angular CLI command, which is what happens behind the scenes when you run Ionic build. So let's hope everything else works uh, fine. Okay, so it looks like we got some progress here now, all the usual build stuff going on, and it's looking pretty good. So starting to deploy site from www, uh, site is live. So hopefully that means it worked. And uh, so you can see here now that says that is um, published, and we have the URL to our uh, application here. So I'll just open that up in a new tab. And hopefully we have a working Ionic application and it looks like we do. No errors, everything seems to be working. It's interesting that it's not working with the emulator open. Okay, so that works, but it won't refresh. 
Why is that? Looks like it doesn't uh, work when there is a forward slash home there. Yeah, so I think the problem here is that uh, it's expecting a, um, a folder to exist. Uh, it's a static site hosting, forward slash home. It's probably expecting there's a home folder with an index.html uh, file in there. So I think we might be able to fix this with if we use the hash routing. Uh, let me just check how to configure that. Um, to Angular use hash, it's something like that. I don't actually usually use this. I'm not 100% sure how to set that one up. You can go old school with the hash location strategy but by providing the use hash true in an object as the second argument of the router module. So let's try that. So I'll just open up the application and we'll add that. Okay, so I have the um, application open now. So uh, it wants us to add um, use hash to the router module. Uh, we actually have a separate app routing folder set up. Um, so we have the router module in here. So we've got router module for root routes. And we also need to supply use hash true as a second parameter to that. So use, hash, use hash true, save that. And I probably should test locally first to see if that actually works. Um, but I'm going to risk and we're just going to deploy straight back to Netlify. So, uh, if I run git status now, we should see that folder has changed. Uh, so I'll just run git add all git commit, uh, enabled hash routing. And now we are going to push that back up again. Okay. So let's jump into here again and we'll see that we have the build, uh, running for our new change. And it looks like this tutorial has turned into more of a example of pushing up with a continuous integration, uh, pushing new changes rather than actually just deploying to Netlify. But uh, this is what happens when you don't check that things work uh, before you actually do a video. So hopefully after this change, everything will work. Okay, so the build is finishing up now. We have site is live. Uh, so let's go back again. We'll open up our Okay, so we can see we got the hash routing in there now. So hopefully if I refresh this, it'll work and it does. So if I go to just .com, it's gonna redirect to home and I click that and everything seems to be working now. Uh, so I guess uh, I haven't, as I said, I haven't tried out like a full proper application with Ionic and Netlify yet. This is literally the first time I've pushed an Ionic application up uh, to Netlify. Uh, so it appears to work with the uh, exception that you will need to use hash routing. I don't know if there's any other way around that. I don't think there would be, uh, but it does seem to work. Uh, don't take my word for it. Maybe you want to actually, you know, do some tests of your own first if you're planning to push your own application up here, but uh, it seems to work fine. And uh, it is a really nice um, deployment process with Netlify. So I just wanted to make a quick video to cover how to do that just because I was so happy with how everything worked with my main website, with my Gatsby blog now. So uh, yeah, I thought it'd be useful just to do a quick video on that. Uh, so yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please do leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.